Hey everyone, in this video we are going to review policy sets. Now, in the previous videos, we have used a single policy for all of our authentication, which would look like this. So we'd have just our authentication and our authorization tabs, and no other, uh, no other menu structure here. Now that's great for a, a, you know, smaller environments where maybe I just want to have all of my rules in one place. However, we have the ability to break out into what we call policy sets, which allows us to have multiple sets of policies, such as uh, multiple authentication and authorization policies. To get started, we're going to go to Administration and Settings. Now on the left here, you can see we have multiple items we can choose from. We're going to navigate to Policy Sets, and we're going to click Enable. Once we click Enable here, we're going to have to log back in because this is going to break up all of our authentication policies. All right, once we log in, we're going to notice that the menu structure has changed up top. And under policies here, we should see policy sets now. So we're going to select policy sets. And notice that we have a summary of all policies and we just have a default policy. Recently, my ICE server that I was using for these lab recordings um, accidentally had some issues with storage and crashed, so I have rebuilt my ICE environment. So none of my rules are here. However, if we had pre-built rules, we would have those all um, in this list under the default set. So to get started, if we were wanting to use multiple policy sets, what we would do is we could click Default, and then let's click Ah, crap, wrong button. We can click our default policy set here and create above. And what we need to do is we need to enter a name for this policy. So let's call it wireless. And let's create a condition that sends traffic to this policy set so that we can process it through authentication and, uh, and authorization. So we're going to create a new condition. Select attribute. We're going to choose device and then device type and we're going to choose Meraki Wireless. This could be anything if you're using another wireless platform. Um, just make sure that all of your network access devices or authenticators are in the same group that you would like to send through this policy. So once we click that and click Save and Submit. This will take just a second. OK, so now we have our wireless policy set. And let's create another one, and we're going to call it Wired. And in this one, we're going to choose a create a new condition and choose device, device type equals, and we're going to choose, in this case, Meraki switching, and click Submit. Once that's done, we can actually have a very nicely segmented uh, wired and wireless set of rules that do not have to correlate and be confusing with long, long lists of rules, and instead have much smaller rule sets. Um, these can also be used uh, for many other things. If we look at the actual conditions that can be chosen, um, we could go through here and see. If you notice, we have actually network access, um, so you could or have radius. So you could even have these broken out into even more granular um, rule sets, such as maybe I want to do radius uh, called station ID and then ends with. And we could choose like guest. And then what would happen here is that we would just process any radius uh, wireless uh, authentication traffic um, from the guest SSID through their own policy set. It's not necessarily needed. It can be kind of uh, handy, though, if you did have quite a few guest policies that you wanted to segment. But for the most part, it can be very handy just to have wired and wireless and possibly even VPN if you were using uh, ICE to authenticate your VPN users. And that's pretty much it. So from the videos moving forward, we're going to configure everything through these policy sets. So I will walk through kind of how we differentiate rules and kind of how they uh, how they fill in. Anyway, I hope this was informative for you and I thank you for viewing.